So first, consider beliefs. By the term belief here, I mean something relatively discrete, that is something that could be dis distinguished from other beliefs. Um, in particular, I have in mind that we all have many beliefs, okay? So any, any one of our beliefs can be expressed as a claim or a sentence. For instance, I believe that today, when I'm recording this video lecture, is Tuesday. Um, I believe that uh, I believe that the Earth uh, rotates around the Sun, that it orbits the Sun. Uh, I may believe that there is intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, or I may not believe that. Okay, I personally, um, I'm not sure what I believe about that. I probably have no definite beliefs about that. Some people believe in God. Okay, some people don't. Um, some people believe that uh, the world that the that that the United States um, government and uh, the well-being of its citizens would be better overall if there were higher taxes on the wealthy. Other people believe that it wouldn't be better if there were higher taxes on the wealthy. So there are um, there are differences of opinion about beliefs. Um, but again, we all believe many things. Probably we we all uh, we all believe that like if we don't drink liquids for a long enough time that we'll die, or if we don't get liquids into our body for a long enough time, then we'll die. Again, I'm probably giving too many examples of this, but I want you to kind of have a sense that you can think about, about our um, psychology in this way, as each one of us has a certain set of beliefs, and those beliefs can differ from one person to another, and each of the beliefs can be articulated um, individually. That is, we can sort of separate out the beliefs and list them, like in this little diagram with the person and the list of one, two, three, and so on, uh, other beliefs. If we tried to list all of our beliefs, of course, it would probably take almost forever, you know, if not forever. I don't, don't know if it's possible to list all of our beliefs, but we can at least theoretically think about our psychology in this way as composed of a discrete number of separate beliefs that we can distinguish from one another. Now, another thing to notice here right at the outset is that our beliefs are not completely disconnected from one another, okay? Our beliefs are related to one another in various ways. And one important kind of relation that they have to one another is that some beliefs support others. That is, they provide evidence or justification for others. So, for instance, um, if I believe that, uh, if I, I, I may, I believe that if I lift this object, this book, in my hand and then let go that it will fall to the ground. Now, uh, uh, that belief is not a belief I have completely independent of every other belief that I have. It's supported by a number of other beliefs. For instance, it's supported by the beliefs I the beliefs that I have that I've seen that happen so many times before. It's supported by the belief I have in the force of gravity, that gravity is a real physical force and that that will draw objects like this book towards the earth if there isn't anything keeping them from moving in that direction. And so, uh, so again, our beliefs are supportive of one another. Um, here's another example. Uh, I think that a person I'm interested in romantically isn't interested in me because I've texted them three times and they haven't responded to any of my texts, okay? So there I'm using evidence, namely the lack of non-response. Certain beliefs I have, I have a belief that they haven't responded. Why do I have that belief? I have that belief because I actually look at my phone and I see no response, okay? And that belief that they haven't responded is supporting another of my beliefs that I now have, which is that they're not interested in me. Okay, probably a pretty uh, reasonable inference if they're not responding after multiple attempts to get in touch with them, they might just not be interested. Well, I've been speaking so far about beliefs in the plural, but now I would like to kind of focus, move um, the focus to a single belief and talk about in particular the relation between a single belief or any one of our beliefs and what would make that belief true or false. Okay, so I'm going to talk about what makes beliefs count as true or false. So take a single belief. In this case, we'll take the belief that there are no bears in Yellowstone Park. That will be the example belief that we're looking at. So imagine I am, uh, I'm a person thinking, I, I know that there is such a thing as Yellowstone Park, it's a national park, and I know there are such things as bears, but I believe that in Yellowstone Park there are no bears, okay? And now suppose, which 
something that is actually the case is true okay there are bears in yellowstone park um, bears live in yellowstone park and so the reality is not correspondent to my belief about the reality in other words i have a certain belief about the world but the world isn't the way i believe it is the world is some other way okay the world has bears in yellowstone park but in my psychology and my set of beliefs, there are no bears in Yellowstone Park. So there's a mismatch between what I believe and what the world is like. So this mismatch, um, this lack of correspondence is what we're going to say defines an untrue belief. This is what makes a belief untrue or another way of putting the term untrue is false. This is what makes a belief false. A belief is false when it doesn't correspond to reality when reality is not the way that the belief describes it as being. On the other hand, if um, a person believes that there are bears in Yellowstone Park, then their belief corresponds to reality since there are actually bears in Yellowstone Park. So when a person thinks to themselves, you know, I'm thinking about going camping, but I need to remember there are bears in Yellowstone Park. That part of their thinking, there are bears in Yellowstone Park, that belief, okay, is true because it corresponds to the way that the world is. And that's how we'll, we will define a true belief. We'll define a true belief as one that corresponds to reality. Now, a last point I wanna make about this definition of truth, this is really just an, an aside or a footnote, but um, this is not the only possible way to define true or what makes a belief true. And it's a matter of controversy in philosophy exactly how that uh, that term or that concept of truth should be defined. So there are other ways of defining truth than in terms of correspondence, uh, and there are um, controversies or conflicts between people who favor one definition or another, one understanding of what truth is versus another. Uh, we are just going to assume the correspondence definition of truth here, and there are various reasons for that. The simplest is that I think and that the sort of most important is that I think it will help you to be an effective critical thinker if you just assume a correspondence theory of truth. It's going to make it easier to do the other things that are asked of you in the course um, and in critical thinking in general, if you kind of at least treat this as a, a kind of baseline or um, first and primary interpretation of what truth is.